Yeah. <laughs> brought me a treat. So did everyone get to share? Yeah, Denise, Natalie, yeah. Anna, Jill, and Jane, and Ellie. All right. Is there anything you'd like to know about me that you haven't figured out already? <laughs> I'm not a big, like, and I've been doing this for this many years, and I have this kind of training, and blah, blah, blah. I just, I just show up, you know. Tell us what you would say if you were sitting. If I were sitting there? Hmm, okay. My name is Kristen. Hi, Hi Kristen. Kristen. I am uh, taking this course because uh, mindfulness for me is a lifetime practice and um, experience. I love connecting with people in a deep, non-superficial way. I love community, being in community. I love compassionate listening and sharing. I love to share and I love to be heard. <laughs> I, um, I'm a recovering alcoholic, uh, food addict, sex addict, shopping addict, uh, TV addict. You know, so mindfulness for me, um, among many, many other things, has been a big part of the urge, you know, the pause, and um, not that autopilot of, I'm going to go to that thing because I feel this way. But like, actually being able to stop, feel, and choose <laughs> instead of reacting and staying with the reaction. Or attaching to the thought. Thanks, Chris. Thank you for sharing. <laughs> Thanks for listening. Thanks for asking. <laughs> All right, let's take some more movement. We're going to use our chair for this one. Stand very close to your chair. This time we'll take a little rotation and bend into, so when, make sure you come back to the center before you start to go down. Inhale, arms are going to go forward and up. And as we exhale, we can windmill our right arm to the right, push down for our big right toe. And keeping that arm windmilling around, it's gonna go down and forward. Inhaling back up. Now we'll sit down slowly. Inhale, so our chest comes forward, hands on our thighs, sliding our hands down our legs and looking underneath of the chair. Inhale, open up your chest first and you bring your head up first. Good, exhale, swing your arms forward and hover over the chair. Inhale, reach up. As you exhale, windmill your left arm back, push down through your left big toe. Bring that left arm down to your hip. You're completing the circle. Come up and forward. Big stretch up. Exhale, sit down slowly. Inhale, hands on thighs, chest is open. We're hip hinging first without bending the spine. And then we're gonna start bending the spine over as we exhale, slide your hands down your legs. You can keep them on your thighs, look under your chair. Let your head hang for just a moment, belly up and in. Inhale, head up, chest open and hover on your exhale, hover. Inhale, rise. Exhale, windmill your right arm, right big toe presses down. Bring it down, forward, and up on the inhale. Exhale, sit down slowly. Hands on thighs, chest is open. The beginning of your forward bend. This time straighten your right leg as you come down, rolling your spine over, vertebra by vertebra. Head comes down last, look under your chair. Inhale, head and shoulders open up, chest opens. Exhale, bring that foot back in and hover. Inhale, reach up. Left side, windmill back, big 
big toe on the left foot. Down, forward, and up, inhaling. Having a seat slowly, belly in to sit down, hinging at the hip joint. Awesome, so healthy. Hands on thighs. Open your chest, straighten your left leg. Start to roll over, vertebra by vertebra. Head comes down last. Your hands can go wherever they feel comfortable. Look under your chair, draw up through your belly. Breath out. Inhale, head forward, chest open. Bring the feet back. Exhale, hover right here. Inhale, extended mountain. Reach for the sky, root through the earth. Feel that connection. Rotate right. Down and forward on your inhale. Relax your shoulders, but strengthen your arms out. Sit down. Your belly in. Right leg comes out straight. Inhale, chest forward. Exhale, flow over your thighs. Look under. Relax your neck completely in your jaw, but draw your belly up and in. That belly is going to support you as you bring your head forward and open your chest. And it'll support you more when you hover and exhale and pull it in. Inhale, rise. You can do a little baby back bend here, bringing your pelvis forward. Exhale, left rotation. Feel your toe, your belly, and your arm rolling back. Inhale, forward. Exhale, sit. Inhale, left leg straight, hand on thigh. Roll slowly, bottom of the spine to the top, all the way through the crown of the head. Belly in, look under. Inhale, head comes up first, and those shoulders peel back. Foot comes in, exhale, hover, chair pose. Inhale, extended mountain. A little opening of the fronts of the thighs here again. It's time to dance it out. Happy dance or sad dance. Present moment, present moment dance. All emotions, welcome dance. No expectation dance, no judgment dance. Curiosity dance, acceptance dance. Yeah. Lack of inhibition stance. <laughs> Have a seat. Or stand or whatever you'd like to do. I'm going to talk now about what is mindfulness. How are we doing so far? Any questions? Peace. Peace, y'all. All right. What the heck is mindfulness? Why don't you give me some ideas first about what mindfulness is? And I will write them down. I would say awareness. Thank you. Let me write that down. Throw out some words and phrases. Present. Thank you. Choosing your words carefully. Mm. Present. I love that this word choice is coming up a lot today. I see you guys are the teachers. Call me. Simply facilitating. Call me. Call me. Call me. Calming. Calming could be a result of that. I hear life. Life. Whew. For the purpose of this course, I'm using one um, very popular but 
one that I absolutely love personally, I'd pick it even if it wasn't popular, Definition of Mindfulness from John Kabat-Zinn. And it says, uh, mindfulness is the awareness that arises from paying attention in a particular way on purpose in the present moment non-judgmentally and then we can add on in service of wisdom and self-understanding so would you like to just throw out anything where you felt like a moment when you had wisdom or self-understanding just like not a long story but like a quick like how that affects your life when you feel like you get that wisdom and self-understanding to my practice, but um, I try to be very mindful and careful when I am treating someone with craniosacral therapy or doing an Ayurvedic assessment because my words or my questions need to pertain to that person, and you want to be... Who wants to be... I want to be uh -huh. careful um, to of that person's needs and not trigger something they might not be ready for. If that makes sense, I know it's pertaining to other people, but it's my act and my choice on how I treat my practice and my clients or patients. If I'm not mindful, that could derail. Somebody. <laughs> My lack of mindfulness can be telling. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you for sharing. Yes. Yes. And I can imagine that even if I'm not a craniosacral therapist, how that mindfulness for me can also affect interactions mm -hmm. all the time with others. Anybody else? So what um, what stuck out with you, or do you have any questions? I'm going to repeat the, the definition you're using. The awareness that arises from paying attention in a particular way, on purpose, in the present moment, non-judgmentally, in service of wisdom and the self-understanding. If you want to add anything, comment in on that, any of that, or ask any questions about that, to make sure that's pretty clear. It's pretty clear. I think that's an excellent thing. I can't think of one instance per se, although I've had a million of them, um, with your spouse. Mm. Whose spouse? Mine. Oh, yours. okay. <laughs> <laughs> You did not my spouse, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my husband. Yeah. In any interaction that we might have, it's being mindful and taking. In a relationship, I can sort of forget all that and just go on what's happening in that moment. Mm. But this is an excellent reminder. Just like I use breathing. If I feel like I'm going to maybe speak um, in a less kind manner than normal, that I take a breath, that sort of thing. And so this in particular to me, mm. you know, the closer that I am to someone, the easier I can get comfort and speak my mind. But you need to pay attention to that. I need to pay attention to that. Oh, good job. <laughs> good job. Good job, Joe. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> but that is about 
about yet paying attention yeah. to that and speaking without judgment. Yeah. Getting through that. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for sharing. I'm reading a book for another class Hi, that I'm taking <laughs> um, right now, and it's correlating with this right now. I'm recognizing it's talking about um, like using um, a Columbo style method of getting clear understanding by asking questions and not judging or jumping to conclusions, but just by asking asking questions instead of making statements, but asking questions to get clear understanding so that you can understand where a person is at and and so that's definitely um, correlating to what we're mm-hmm. learning today. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. Thank you for Thank sharing. You for sharing. Such good insight from everyone. I want to point out, you may or may not recognize that we spend a lot of time, we, as I'm referring to humans in general, you may not fall into this category. Um, rehashing the past. Anybody here rehash the past? I do. <laughs> uh, rehearsing the future? Uh, I do. And I know that there is a very um, healthy and uh, productive way to rehearse the future. It's, but there's also an obsessive, insane way to rehearse the future. There is a lot of worrying about the future or ruminating, which often is involved with resentment about the past. Mindfulness is a way to compassionately bring myself into the present to give me clarity, focus, choice. What's the next right action? Or simply go back to sleep. (laughs) <laughs> that, you know, tomorrow has enough worries of its own. I can deal with that tomorrow. Right now is the time for rest. That is mindfulness. Right now is the time for rest. Right now is the time for play. But I'm working in my head and I'm at the beach playing. Right now is the time for work, but all I can think about is eating or watching TV. Right now is the time for what? What? You know, driving, being present. So mindfulness helps us go off of autopilot, autopilot thinking, which includes ants, automatic negative thoughts. We're pre-programmed for this. It's it's very primitive. It's very... um, it's, It's very much in our DNA as a survival technique, so there's no judgment about it. I am pre-programmed for automatic negative thoughts and noticing what's wrong because it's a survival technique. If I notice what's out there to threaten me or kill me or hurt me, and I'm very aware of that, I'm more likely to survive than if I'm like, "Ah, you know? So where's the balance, right? And in this civilized time, there's not something around every corner, really. It is, if I watch the news every day, I'll probably imagine that there's something around the corner, every single corner. That's all in my head, because I've been through a whole bunch of days recently where there was nothing (laughs) to hurt, nothing hurt me. So me imagining that is somewhat of a waste, isn't it? It's using my energy. It's stealing from the present moment for something that is all in my head. I'm not saying be naive but I am saying there's a balance. What is awareness not? So I I did mention non-judgmental, curiosity, kindness, and acceptance. I personally didn't have any of those. I didn't know how to do any of those. Those were absolutely foreign concepts to me. I didn't grow up that way. Um, This is a practice. Thank you for mentioning someone in here. Maybe you mentioned that Compassion is a practice, and it's about cultivating compassion. I also did not necessarily have that for, I had it for animals, not for people. (laughs) I have learned to have it for people. (laughs) So um, what is it not? What is um, mindfulness is not? It is not a relaxation technique, because mindfulness often brings about something other than relaxation. 
and that it is about the acceptance of whatever comes. So there may be discomfort, there may be emotions that I am not acquainted to, have not allowed, have been taught that are not okay. It is about being with what arises non-judgmentally on purpose in the present moment um, for in the service of that wisdom. And, and, and I would add a big freedom. Freedom. It's all about the freedom. Um, it's not a quick fix, obviously. <laughs> So, uh, just like many other things in yoga, I'm not going to practice every day for a week, and boom! It's not, a, it's not a ritual where I come away a new person. It's a practice. Just like eating every day, sleeping every day, breathing every day, exercising every day, um, it's also, there's a lot of grace in the mindfulness practice, where when I plan to and I don't, there's grace. It's starting again. It's starting again. It's okay. Um, it's not a technique because it's a lifestyle. I kind of just talked about that, right? And it's not a religion. If you have a religion of choice, a faith of choice, it may complement and enhance. You can use it that way. But there's no expectation about that. And it, no religion has a monopoly on the mindfulness practice. So, there's that. And the last thing I want to say is just to repeat that there's an informal and a formal practice. You will be asked to practice formally each day as well as informally. And then when we come back, the accountability is that when you come back each week, we're going to have a little time to share the process, how our practice is going. Not to say how well we did, not to impress anybody, to really share, try on struggles, whatever, whatever, just the reality of what, what's happening, you know. So that's it. Any questions? All right. Does anybody need hand sanitizer or wash their hands? Wash their hands to handle a piece of food. Or do you feel like you're okay handling a piece of food? It, well, actually, it may not be food. I don't even know. But you, you will be putting it in your mouth. So whether it's food or not, I'm not sure. But you'll be putting it in your mouth. You're good? Yes. All right. Go ahead and grab your um, thing, your little container under your chair. Open it up. Maybe. Maybe. I'd like to say ahead of time... I'd like to say ahead of time that um, you can leave that container here. I will wash it and recycle it, sanitize it and recycle it. Or you can take it home, reuse it, or recycle it. But please don't throw it in the trash. There was like one thing that I wanted. Reusing is the best, though, man. That's my favorite. Um, where are we? Oh, yes. Just little reminders. Cool. All right, take out one of these objects out of this container, and you can put the container down on the ground, back on the ground, and just hold the object in your hands. Let's adopt a beginner's mind as if we've never done this before. It's a big part of our mindfulness practice. Look at this object in your hand. You might close your eyes and feel it. You might put it up to your nose and smell it. See if it makes a sound. Put it to your ear. Or as you roll it between your fingers, it might make a sound. Now hold it here, and you may close your eyes or keep them open, but imagine putting it in your mouth without putting it in your mouth. Just imagine. Notice what happens. Take your
your time to follow my directions one little bit at a time. Place that object in your mouth on your tongue. And simply roll it around on your tongue a little bit. Not biting down yet. you to bite one time, just once. Be with the sensations. Now I invite you to chew this object up without swallowing. Anytime you have the urge to swallow, notice that it's an urge. And keep the object in your mouth as you chew it. Decide that it is time to swallow, please swallow. you'd like to share something with the group about this exercise of mindful eating. And if you'd like to involve the roots, which means what happened upstream? If this is different for you or if this is similar, if you're familiar or unfamiliar with this, what happened upstream? I wonder how we got here with that. Where did that come from? Anything you noticed or learned or became aware of during this exercise? I have something. Yeah, um, Natalie. I was um, more aware of the texture of what it was, uh -huh. more of than just chewing it and swallowing it. Uh -huh. Like it, I don't know, feels a more of a texture and. Um, more of a enjoying it more than just without knowing what it is. Just kind of be more mindful of what it, I was putting in my mouth mm -hmm. and how to chew it. Mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for sharing. Mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing. That makes sense. Cheryl? I had to make a mindful choice not to swallow. Mm -hmm because it felt as though naturally I wanted to swallow, mm -hmm. but I had to make a mindful choice to stay in the present, listen to the directions before I swallow. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, Anna? I was very aware of the sensation once it hit my tongue. And then, when you said swallow, because I had it at the front of my tongue, the position was chewing with my front teeth. Mm -hmm. So I made a choice to move it to the side, <laughs> and it gave a whole different type of sensation for me to be able to swallow. So I was very aware of where it was inside of my mouth and the need to move so that I could swallow. Otherwise, I was stuck with it just at the front of my mouth. And so I thought, wow, we could be stuck in these places. I can. <laughs> Reposition, I can. And then move Do what's best next. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for sharing. Yeah. All of that with the raisin. <laughs> <laughs> Very powerful. It is. Yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. I am not a raisin fan. Oh, oh man. <laughs> so <laughs> I like them sometimes mixed up in Indian food, something like that. But by themselves, it was like, hmm, okay. But it was fun. 
I generally practice mindful eating because I come from eating disorder land for many, many years. Mindful eating helps, like you were saying, you know, you focus on what's in your mouth, you think about it, you taste it, texture, all those things which are good. That generally, when I was eating, that was not the point. It's whatever need you're trying to assist, whatever craziness that gets in there. Mm -hmm. So it was actually very good that it was a raisin. Since <laughs> they're not my favorite. And I thought it was pretty good. The whole thing. I related to both urge to swallow trouble swallowing, moving it around. I think you had that awareness too. Mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for sharing. Yeah. Anything else? Yes. Anybody else? Well, we have one more. Yeah. Just yeah. It reminded me that it was a reminder to myself that I have not been mindfully eating in general in that I am not on my, you know, normal mindful eating path, and which is contributing to my lack of healthy digestion, not just internally with, you know, the way your digest, the way my digestive system works, mm -hmm. and which also means that mentally I'm not digesting everything. I know it was a simple exercise, but these were the reminders I was giving myself. Thank you, Angelique. Thanks for sharing that. I, I uh, noticed that I never considered the sound of, of food before, so that was something that was interesting. I, um, I also noticed when I put it on my tongue, I was mindfully like treating it like with love and um, Kindness, I guess it was just like it was on like I set it on a pillow you know what I mean like I kind of was honoring it in some way I also noticed that like typically I would like let's say eating chips or something I might go to my mouth wipe my fingers chomp and swallow without mindfulness but I didn't because I was paying so much attention to what was going on with this tender little thing in my mouth that I didn't even wipe my fingers even though I kind of, it was my natural thing to do. Thank there Thank you, you for reminding me of something I forgot. What I would, what I would have loved to started with is holding it very gently in my hand, our hands, <clears throat> to imagine all the hands that touched it. To imagine that it came out of soil, was nurtured by sun, water, with so many people harvesting, planting, tending, harvesting, drying, processing, packaging, transporting, shelving, Check out, selling, coming home, very carefully with very, very clean, sanitized hands placing in containers. How many hands went into how much effort and energy from the earth and from people went into this one little item? How much time? and how much worth, thank you for pointing that out, I can easily place or not place on this tiny little item. How I can overlook the significance and I can apply that to everything. And that's a big part of the mindfulness eating practice that I've introduced today and I have invited you to practice throughout this course and maybe forever. <laughs> So thank you for engaging and participating. Gosh, you guys are so great. Ah, all right, how much time do we have? All right, 
I'm going to let you choose between a little more time for a body scan or a little more time for movement. So cl everybody close your eyes. We're going to have a vote, an anonymous vote. If you want one more session of movement, raise your hand and keep it up. Open your eyes and everybody stand up. Open up your legs. Turn your right toes to the right and your left toes towards the center. Take a big breath. Right toes to the right, left toes towards the center a little bit, or in towards the right a little bit. Inhale. Exhale, be with your body, be in your body, be an experience of your body rather than the idea of your body. Right hand on your right hip. Left arm reaching up and over in a long line. Inhale. Bend your right knee. Reach up and back. Exhale. Inhale, look at your fingers. Straighten your leg. Bend your knee, reach that arm back, pull the shoulder away from the ear a little bit on your left side. Let's do that a couple more times. Keep the floor going. God bless you. Inhale. God bless us all. Exhale. <coughs> Indeed, so it is. Three more. Feel that space alongside the left side of the body, heel to fingertips. Exhale, pull the belly in, bend your knee. Roll the shoulder back away from your ear. You're looking at your right foot now. Your left shoulder is rolled back away from your left ear. You're breathing. One more time. Inhale. Reach up and over. Straight legs. Exhale. Bend the knee. Reach arm back behind you. Look down. Up to the center. Turn your toes forward towards the center of the circle. Left toes turned out to the left. Right toes turn into the left just a little bit. Left hand on your hip. Right arm coming up and over, long line, heel to fingertips. Feel that space, feel your ribs pulling away from your hips. Inhale. Exhale, bend your left knee, roll that right shoulder back, and look down at your left foot. Align your left knee over the center of that left foot. Inhale, straighten and Exhale. So we're just doing some side reaching. Feel okay. free. I wasn't sure if I was going to join in mid pose or right. wait till the next. Well, this next is the second switch. side. Okay. So just lengthen both sides. Okay. I'll do do a couple. Let's do three more, and you can do a couple on one side and a couple on the other side. Exhale. Knee bends. Roll the shoulder back away from the ear. Lengthen through your right side. Big long stretch. Exhale, pull your belly in, bend that knee, sink your hips, roll the shoulder back, look down. Looking good, one more time. I hope you're feeling as good as you look. Mm, giving yourself the experience that you need in your body. And then come on up to the center if you need anything else, please take it. Give yourself, your body, what it needs. This is a great time to go back to your mat, lie down on your back. Use props, a roll under your neck, not a pillow to lift your head up. Why? Because, okay, look at me. Let's say I'm lying down, but I put a pillow in my, under my head. What does it do? Is this good? Would this be healthy posture? No. No. So I want my head to be... Healthy posture when I'm on my ear with my shoulder, but putting a roll under the neck. Ooh, yeah. That'll say what it says to the neck muscles. And I'm not saying you can't use a pillow because if you're in pain without your pillow, <laughs> then use your pillow, okay? Uh, bolster under your knees if you wish. Big breath in. Grounding moment, breath and grounding, present moment awareness. With 
compassion, curiosity, acceptance, and non-judgment. invite you to the experience of being. There is a way to have a mental construct of the body. It's a totally different experience to feel the body. And this is one of our anchors that we use in mindfulness. You'll hear this word a lot, anchors. And today we're using the anchors of the felt sensations of the body. Paying attention, the awareness that arises when we're paying attention in a particular way to the felt sensations of the body in the present moment, non judgmentally. you to stay still and if you notice that you're moving simply notice the movement and invite yourself back to stillness and it's okay if you don't feel something or you do feel something whatever you feel you feel simply be aware of what's going on with that mind body connection feeling your right foot Soul. Top of the foot. Be aware of what you can or can't feel without moving that right foot. And if you don't feel anything, it's okay. an invitation to bring more attention and more awareness into that foot. And if you still don't feel anything, it's okay. Awareness into your right lower leg. Awareness into your right thigh. Bring your attention to your left foot, toes, sole, top of that foot, your left lower leg. gluteals, the front of your pelvis, pubic bone, front hip bones, lower belly, and lower torso, belly and low back. side waist, upper torso, chest, upper back, tension going down through your arms, to your hands, and resting there, attention resting in your hands.
extension back to shoulders. Through the neck. Sensation of the skull being supported by the earth. Crown of your head. Experience of your temples, your ears. Forehead, your eyes, your jawbone, your cheeks. Experience your whole body and perhaps visualize your whole body being full of light. Glowing, pulsing, very alive and energetic, but rested at the same time, calm and rested. But without expectations, so if the words don't fit, it's okay. It's okay. You can still visualize if you like, or you can be with whatever is. And invite in a mindful, it's okay. It's okay, Ellie. It's okay, Angelique. It's okay, Cheryl. It's okay, Jill. It's okay, Anna. It's okay, Natalie. It's okay, Denise. It's okay, Kristen. It's okay. Deep breath in together. Inhale through the nose. Long exhale through the mouth. Inward, inward, inward. I invite you to come up to sit on your mat in some way that's comfortable for you. Take your time. See if you can move mindfully. Move to that seated position so you feel every part of the journey. <clears throat> May we into the world, knowing that at our deepest essence, we are love, we are joy, we are peace. May we practice mindfulness as a lifestyle with loving kindness, with pause, with breath. May we call
cultivate compassion within ourselves and all around us. And you can add your affirmation here, whatever that word for you is. Shalom, Amen, Namaste, and so it is. Just shout it out if you agree. Treat. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for the treats. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, boy, you're not gonna go hungry now. You got two more raisins to eat mindfully. So Kristen, you'll have to um, explain the homework.